So call now. It's 1-800-MEAT-HOOKS. In a world of uncertainty, who will challenge the norm? Only one game lets you do that. Pro Project Zone, the cut game. Around the world, people are becoming obsessed with the Project Zomboid card game. Riots start breaking out from the lack of supply of the Project Zomboid card game packs. Humanity has gone insane over these cards. God help us all. Martial law has been declared in the city of Raven Creek. The government has asked people to lock their doors and stay inside. Do not come into contact with any card packs. Ooh. Look it! I got a wonderful card right here! <laughs> this is Jonathan Clark with Raven Creek News 10, signing off for one last time! <laughs> From the day the PZ cards were first released, it was over for the human race. Slowly, more and more people sold off all their worldly possessions to just buy one more pack. Those who had nothing left slowly devolved into shambling creatures we call card sharks. They would try to kill anyone regardless of if they had cards or not. In what's left of this world we follow Anzu, a young woman whose friends died trying to escape the city of Raven Creek. She must return to the power of the cards one last time to help her escape the madness. How long can she survive the Project Zomboid card game? So in this ravaged world, I have replaced all possible loot in containers with booster packs from the Project Zomboid card game. Opening one of these booster packs gives you one of six items. Most of them are common, but some are uncommon or even rare. Plus, as every card game enthusiast knows, one can't help but scream out what kind of amazing pulls they get. Just hope no card sharks are around to hear it. Packs are rare and can be found in any container in the city. Resources and items that appear on the ground can still be found around the map, which can still be used as needed. With the laws of cards established, it's time to watch Anzu escape from her downtown apartment in Raven Creek. She had locked herself out of her apartment and hidden on her balcony as two crazed card sharks had broken in and were looking for cards. She managed to get inside through the window and takes down the two assailants. She knows she will need protection from the others that she can hear breaking in around her. So she breaks into a neighbor's apartment to find her first card pack. Inside is really not anything too useful. Luckily, the neighbors had left their sewing out, so she was able to rip it into rags for later. In their bedroom was another card pack and a hoodie. This pack proves more valuable, containing a backpack which she could use to carry things around, and a saw which would allow her to break things down and build things. Still no weapon though, and she can hear that there isn't much time before the creatures get in the building. She finds one more pack which contains some medical supplies, a keytar, and an umbrella. The key tar and the umbrella will do for some makeshift weapons for now. She encounters her first set of newcomers, and well, the key tar breaks after one swing, so she has to resort to using the umbrella, which is quite effective. The search for cards continues as she starts to feel the itch to keep finding more. The apartment building proves to be full of packs. She takes the valuable items she finds. In one of these packs, she gets one of the most powerful weapons, a katana also a shotgun devoid of bullets, which may be useful in the future. With this new weapon in hand, she leaves the building in search for a better place to make her base, while searching for supplies and a car to help her escape the city. She encounters a few hordes, but nothing her new trusty friend can't handle. She manages to find a decent spot to store stuff since it's becoming apparent that she will not have enough strength to carry it all. See, she was unemployed and free from any useful traits, but if the cards provided her with some traits, that could be very useful. Her stats were very basic so carrying capacity was limited. She drops off the non-essentials and starts the search for more supplies and a vehicle to get out of there. She needs a steady supply of food and before the water stops working, a supply of water as well. She searches all of the nearby buildings, grabbing card packs, bringing them back, and opening them, dropping the contents she doesn't want on the ground. She also makes sure to keep herself clean, because she doesn't want to get a cold given the lack of medical supplies. She continues like this for a few days, taking down card sharks, exploring abandoned buildings, and opening packs. She spends time honing her cooking skills with some of the excess supplies amid the squalor of the crowded apartment floor. To boost her mood, she puts on a festive hat trying to keep back the thoughts that Christmas may not come this year. 
Well, unless you call Card Pack Santa. On one of her forays to find more packs, she manages to locate a car with the keys still inside. Since car keys are very rare now, this is extremely lucky. She drives it back to the base with the little gas it has in it. Now she collects all of her empty containers and begins siphoning gas from the surrounding cars until she thinks she has enough. She then grabs the important supplies and bids her old hideout adieu. Though she'd only been there for three days, it had kept her safe. She loads up the car and starts the dangerous journey out of the city. She almost flips the car on the first go, which is not exactly a good sign. She dodges and weaves through the burned out cars and car sharks. This doesn't go super well and the car gets really banged up. Out of gas, she manages to fill up the car at a gas station while keeping the sharks at bay. But soon after, she accidentally enters a dead end, and the car stalls, forcing her to abandon it as the card sharks swarm it. She escapes into a nearby apartment building, where she spends the night hoping that the car will start in the morning, or she can get her supplies. She sleeps soundly, but in the morning, the vehicular rescue goes awry. The car does start, but not for long, and a horde is fast approaching. She grabs what little she could, and books it to a nearby structure that seems to have been built just after everything started falling apart. This proved to be a huge mistake, because she had taken herself from the low stakes table to the high stakes table. She dodges around a collection of cots and medical beds, dodging around card sharks as she makes her way to a building in the back of the complex. She sees an open garage door and sprints inside for safety. It's pitch black inside, but as her eyes adjust to the light, she realizes that it's not a safe place, as it's packed wall to wall with sharks. She turns on her heels and books it around the building. She desperately tries to find a way out as the horde follows her. At this point, she's hungry, thirsty, and tired, which is making it harder and harder for her to run away. Unfortunately, her food and water were one of the things she left in the car. She manages to find a guard post, which she uses to hop the fence and make a break for the woods. travels for several miles in the dense forest until she collapses. Luckily, no sharks found her, and once she'd awakened, it was time for her to look how far she'd come. Her heart sank as she looked at the map and knew there was nothing for miles. With her limited supplies, she knew she wouldn't make it out here. So she jogged back to the city to find another car and some more supplies. The car was a lost cause at this point, since there was a giant horde of sharks between her and it. She enters the southern suburbs of the city. She finds a small apartment to spend the night and opens a pack so that she can eat and hopefully recoup some losses. She manages to get enough food for the night and then crawls into bed for a good night's sleep. When she wakes up, it's still dark out and she goes back out to find a car. Thinking she's found one, she starts cleaning out the sharks, but her trusty katana shattered in her hands, and she was forced to defend herself with some hot lead. This attracts many a card shark, and she starts getting overwhelmed. She tries to exit the city using the bridge there, but it's blocked off, so she is forced to flee down the beach past some resorts full of sharks. She escapes into what she thinks is an abandoned apartment building. But alas, if only she knew. Inside seems quiet until she gets upstairs and rounds the corner and finds it's filled with sharks. 
Finding herself now flanked from both sides, she flees into an apartment building with the horde beating on the door behind her. Inside, she is greeted by a few sharks, and one of them decides to take a chunk out of her neck. Bleeding profusely, she fights back and flees to the balcony. She manages to slap on a bandage right before she bleeds out, and then jumps off the balcony and sprints into a mini-mart. She quickly grabs all the card packs she can find, before taking a breather. After things seem to calm down, she sneaks out of the building and heads into the upstairs apartments where she can safely get some shut-eye. This building is the perfect place to replenish her supplies, as it's full of potential pack locations. However, she finds it's rather empty of cards, and without a permanent base, she is forced to leave some important books behind to have space for some food and water. She continues to search the surrounding buildings, but without her trusty katana, card sharks are a significant threat now. Especially in this part of the city, they seem to gather in large clumps. So, as she continues to search and dodge them, it's time to find another car. With some luck, she manages to find a car in okay condition. She just needs some gas. She once again siphons it from nearby cars and then hops in to escape this hellhole. As she drives away, one of the car's tires pops, causing her to lose control and crash into a fence. Luckily, the car still starts after that, but not for long, as eventually, it hits into a lamppost. Seems like it came out of nowhere to me, but that's just to my untrained eye. She hops out before the surrounding hordes can catch up with her and begins to search for more packs to try and produce another melee weapon she can use. Earlier, she had found a snow shovel, which worked, but it was not very good at taking out large hordes. The search is quite fruitless. In fact, she doesn't find many packs at all. She stops at another apartment block for the night, finding a deserted place that she can stay for a bit while she searches for a car. At this point, she was starting to rethink her idea of leaving the city. After all, it had a steady supply of cards, and she was starting to get the itch. The next day, as she searched for more cards, she scouted on an old drive-in that would be a great place for her to build a base in. All she needed was to find the right books to help her improve her carpentry skills to secure the drive through while looking for these supplies, she manages to find another katana as well as copious amounts of food and water. Now she needed tools to help her improve her skills. A hammer, saw, and a screwdriver would be perfect to start with. She had, however, exhausted many of the card pack locations nearby, so she headed out further to a nearby trailer park. This park proved a decent spot for packs, as well as a place to camp out. Well, that was true until one of the trailers had an active security system. It went off as soon as she tried to go inside alerting all of the sharks in the area to her presence. One shark got the better of her and managed to take a chunk out of her hand, causing her to panic. See, one of the main reasons this was so worrying was because the card shark madness could spread via a bite or scratch and cause one to devolve quicker into madness. First, you experience a heightened level of anxiety related to a lack of card packs. Then you begin to feel sick until one day you become one of them. See, like those mental gymnastics to make things fit into the story? Back to Anzu where she hoped she was not infected. She took down the horde of sharks, but not without her second katana breaking. Without it, she decided to spend one more day in the park hoping to return home tomorrow with the pack she'd collected. However, when she awoke, she felt the first signs of the infection. She panicked a bit, but then she soon calmed down, knowing that there was one thing that could still help her. The rarest card in the card packs was one that could cure any sickness, including madness. She knew if she could find that card, things would get better. She opened the card pack she had collected without any luck, only finding a rolling pin and an umbrella for protection. She headed further north from her apartment base to the suburbs' houses. These were swarming with sharks, but she really had no choice. The clock was ticking. She went from house to house, opening packs along the way without any luck. She had to really work hard to outwit the sharks, keeping one step ahead of them. She managed to pull a shovel from one of the packs, which helped clear them out. But as time wore on without success, she became weaker and weaker from the infection. She took her last pack and started a ceremony to try and increase the luck of the pack, hoping this was the one. She waited and then picked it up from the floor, opening it slowly. Inside was not what she was looking for, and feeling weak and dejected, she tried to get into one of the boarded up houses. She was getting desperate and the symptoms were only getting worse. There was not much time left. She broke into the house, hoping this was the one. Why else would it be boarded up? 
This was not the case, and she knew it was time for one last option. If she killed enough sharks, maybe there would be enough packs on them to find it. She made her way outside and prepared for a firefight. She began eliminating the sharks as they were drawn to her gunfire. At first, this technique seemed to be working. She was at the end of the street, and the house that she had just been in had a fence at the back of it so sharks couldn't sneak up on her. However, she didn't check thoroughly enough and missed the fact that the fence had a gate which could be broken open. As she fired into the crowd, another horde came from behind, causing her to panic. She ran from them, dodging and weaving, but she misstepped, tripping and falling. Her shotgun went flying from her hands, and she had to go without it. At this point, her shovel had broken, so the only thing she had was an empty pistol to defend herself with. If she could make it back to the shotgun, she had enough ammo that she could take them all down. She jumped over the fence and followed it parallel to where the house was, until she was on the other side of where she thought she dropped the gun. She hopped over the fence into the backyard, but she had misjudged where the shotgun was and the horde closed in. She made a last ditch effort to grab it, but she was overwhelmed. And this is where Anzu's tail was cut short. As the crowd closed in, she screamed one last time before giving into the madness. This is one of the many tales from the world of the Project Zomboid card game. This mod was created by yours truly, and if you would like to try a world like this, I have provided a link to download the files below. I had a blast with this run. There were so many others, but this was certainly the best one with the most twists and turns. I hope to return to this world again if you guys liked this one. I have plans for other additions to this mod, trap cards, various other pack types, etc. So I would love to do more. This was my first foray into modding Zomboid, and hopefully not the last. Anyway, stay safe out there, fellow card game enthusiasts, and I will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.